On we go. Um, uh, four more parts of speech. Uh, I, I left the part up there. These are the bare necessities. Look for the bare necessities. These are the bare necessities, and you really do need to know these. Okay, a fifth part of speech is a pronoun. Henceforth, PN. A pronoun is a word that, that's what it is, same as above, takes the place of a noun or nouns. Pro, for, noun. It's there for a noun. It really, this in a way should be so easy. I think kids get mental blocks. I know they do. They get mental blocks uh, about these. And I think perhaps at an earlier age before they reach me, they've decided that they simply cannot understand this. It, it, it's a problem. I'd almost rather have a student come to me who knows no grammar at all, none, than to have someone who's ready to say a noun is a word that, a, a noun is a person, place, or thing. Because I've got to overcome the other stuff. Uh, I want clear thinking. Uh, so a pronoun uh, is a word that takes the place of a noun. Now you could stop there. But the thing is, if you're really being careful, there are pronouns like they. Well, they takes the place of more than one noun. The boy and the girl. They. They went. So it could be nouns. Uh, it could be plural. Number six, a conjunction. Hence for CJ is a word that joins. Now they like that because it's so simple, joins. And uh, it's maybe not satisfying in a way, joins what? Well the thing is if you start listing them, conjunctions can join nouns, they can join phrases, they can join sentences, they can join adjectives, they can join all kinds of things, uh, uh, clauses. Uh, so I just say joins. Uh, these definitions are not perfect, I know. But the joins is the jumped part. Con is together. It joins things together. Number seven, a preposition, henceforth prep, is a word that begins a prepositional phrase. Now, I say sorry right away because a lot of people will notice, now wait a minute, you can't do that. And I'll even ask the kids, what's wrong with that definition? And they're usually pretty quick to say, well, you can't use the word that you're defining in your definition. And sometimes I'll say, well, what do you mean? And they'll say, well, if I don't know what a preposition is, how am I going to know what a prepositional phrase is? And if I don't know what a prepositional phrase is, well, now I don't know what a preposition is. I know, it's circular, and they're right. I like that they can point that out. You could look preposition up in a dictionary, and it would give you a more perfect definition, but um, I have my reasons for doing it like that. I want the kids to be, rattled, to be able to rattle it off. So if they see a preposition, they're going to expect to see a prepositional phrase. Uh, and then finally, uh, the eighth one, an interjection, henceforth IJ. IJ, an interjection, uh, ibit is a word that shows feeling and stands alone, and they both have to be there. Because if you have a word like sad, that shows feeling, or happy, I am happy. Well, happy is an adjective, that's modifying I. Uh, that's not an interjection, it's knit up in the sentence. An interjection stands alone, like, wow, I am happy. Well, the wow uh, is not knit up into the sentence, it stands alone. And there are some linguists that argue that interjection should actually not be considered a part of speech. There should maybe only be seven parts of speech. Maybe only six if you lump adjectives and adjective adverbs together. I don't know about that. But interjections, part of the definition is they do not get bound into the syntax, the sentence. I, I'll, I'm jumping ahead. I haven't explained about syntax yet but they stand alone. You can put them anywhere. And, and even, I've got some problems even with the idea that is a word that, because some interjections aren't even really words. Somebody punches you in the gut, that sound you make, it could be an interjection. As a matter of fact, interjections are often quite hard to spell because they're sounds. But the thing is they show feeling. Whether it's good feeling or bad feeling, they show feeling and the critical thing is they stand alone. Now, I make my students memorize this by rote. I'll ask them, close your notes. Um, usually I say, go ahead, use your notes. In the linguistics section, this is all laid out. But they'll say, no, close your notes. What are the eight parts of speech? 
noun, verb, adjective, adverb, pronoun, conjunction, preposition, and interjection. I always go in the same order for myself, so I don't have to think which one did I miss. And then I'll, I'll ask them, what am I defining if I say this is a word that names noun? What am I defining if I say this is a word that shows action or state of being, verb? And I'll go through like that, and I'll quiz them, and then I'll say, okay, what's a noun? And I'll expect them to write down a noun is a word that names. Um, and, and there have been some times where I thought, I'm not going to go on until every one of my students can ace this test. Because it's kind of pointless if you don't know what these are. Um, now, at least in the, in the school, well, in the world where I taught at public education, t teachers would sometimes rail about the fact that you can take a high school senior, 18 years old, and say, what's a noun? And he has no idea. I know, uh, I know. I, I've used the image before about pounding a bent nail. I think sometimes that the idea, you, you kids are taught what a noun is maybe when they're eight years old, but if they don't get it, it doesn't matter how many times you pound a bent nail, it's not going to go in. You have to pull that nail out and start with a new nail. And in a way, uh, I'm hope, or at least straighten that nail, it better start with a new nail. So, in a way, I'm hoping that my approach may be different enough that it can be a little bit like a, a new nail to those that, that don't have this. And, and again, you know, the, in a public school, the kids were there whether they wanted to be or not. They were there because that's where they had to be. You people watching this video, you don't have to do this. But if you want to go on and learn a foreign language and you want to understand English grammar, you need to know these. These are the bare necessities. See you tomorrow.